You guys ready to tackle a brand new problem? If you want to code along, make sure to hit the link in the description below. It's time to pop our daily dose of code. This next problem is called Valid Sudoku. Now all you diehard Sudoku fans out there, don't go losing your head. Keep calm. It's not really a Sudoku problem. We're not actually solving Sudoku. That'll come later. That's a few problems later. This is a prelude to that problem. This is also pretty interesting. So stick around and let's solve the problem together. Valid Sudoku. You're given a 9 by 9 array ARR. It is split into 9 3 by 3 boxes as shown. So this is the first 3 by 3. This is the second, this is the third and so on for a total of 9. Each digit in ARR must appear only once in each row, once in each column and once in each box. Minus 1 is considered a blank element. Only consider elements 1 to 9. So each of these boxes, these empty boxes is going to be a minus 1. This is our input right here. Our output is 1 if it is valid and 0 if it's not. Let's take a closer look. Let's have a look at the first element. We can see there's no other one in the row, there's no other one in the column, and there's no other one in the box. So this element is fine, it's perfect. Once we have a look at the next element too, there's no other element in the row, there's no other element in the box, but in the column, there is another two, which is why it's invalid. And the moment we encounter even one invalid element, we return false or zero as our output. There's not much in the way of constraints. So I'll leave this screen open, do your thing guys, and we'll be back really quick. Now, solving this problem just requires tracking each element, tracking each row, each column, and each box, and checking whether that element is present in that row, column, or box. Now, rows and columns are not very hard to track. One is present in location 0, 0, which is why its row is 0 and its column is 0. Two is present in location 0, 4, row 0, column 4. The tough part is figuring out how to calculate the box number. Let's label the boxes 0 to 8 as you can see on your screen right here. How are we going to convert the ij values into these numbers? That's what we have to figure out if we want to solve the problem guys. No pressure, we'll be back quickly. You can pause the video and take your own time. Now the first thing we are going to do is to try to convert 9 columns into 3 columns and 9 rows into 3 rows. How do we do that? Simple division. We divide the total number of rows by 3 and the total number of columns by 3. Now instead of having rows from 0 to 8, we have rows from 0 to 2. And it's the same thing with the columns. Now we've got 3 rows, 3 columns and we've got to convert them into the values you see on your screen. And this is how you do it. You apply the formula 3 into i plus j. So if we have a look at our first row, this i value is 0. So all we do is add the j value. This is going to be 0, this is going to be 1, and this here is going to be 2. Now we're still going to be adding 0, 1, and 2 as the j values, but the y value can no longer be 0. It has to be 3 which is why we multiply 3 into the i value. This value is 3, this is 4, this is 5. Similarly, we've got to multiply 3 to the i value, which is why this is 6, 7 and 8. Now that we've got our three values, the row value, the column value and the box value, we simply have to track each element in those respective fields. So we're going to have a row array consisting of nine rows of nine zeros a column array consisting of 9 rows of 9 zeros and a box array consisting of, you guessed it, 9 rows of 9 zeros. Now what do they mean? Let's visit one of these elements and try to figure that out. Let's have a look at this 9 right here. The first thing we are going to do is subtract 1 from the value to make it 8. Because we are working with indices, it's much easier to use them with their 0 indexed. So this 9 gets converted to 8. It's present in the 0th row. So we are going to update row of 0 of 8 to 1. What this means is, in the first row, there is now an 8 which is present. 
Similarly, we are going to update column of 8 of 8 to 1. Meaning, in the 8th column, an element 8 is present. Now we know the box number right here is going to be 2. So we update box of 2 of 8 to 1. Which means, the box with index 2 has 8 present in it. Now we are calling it 8 since we subtracted 1, but in actuality it's 9. Let's have a look at this 2. We apply the same concept. The row is 0. 2 becomes 1 since we subtract 1 from it. So row of 0 of 1 becomes 1. Column of 4 of 1 becomes 1. And box of 1 of 1 becomes 1. Now once we hit this 2, we are going to notice that this column Column of 4 of 1 is already filled. It's already got 1 as its value, which is why we're going to return false when we hit this 2. Here's our code right here, short and sweet. Initially, we fill row, column, and box with zeros. Now we'll run a loop through the entire matrix ARR. We know it's a 9 by 9 matrix. If it is minus 1, the element in question is minus 1, we simply ignore it. It holds no value to us. If it is not minus 1, we subtract 1 from its value because we are dealing with indices. We calculate its box number. Now, if that row, that column or that box already has this value, then we are going to directly return 0. If not, we are going to update the row, column and box in order to show that that value is present in that location. If we manage to get by all of these without ever encountering this condition, that means our matrix is by definition valid, which is why we return 1. Let's see if this works. Sample test case have been passed and once we hit submit, Each and every test case has been accepted. So guys, that's the solution to the problem, valid Sudoku. I hope you liked it and I hope you stick around for the next part. It's going to be a lot more interesting and a lot more challenging than this. This was, like I said, a precursor to the coming problem. Make sure to hit the golden trio. Make sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you all next time.